All right, today I'm gonna to be reviewing this awesome RGB by Color Light made by Litoforo. This is the R18 light. I cannot get enough of these lights because I do cinematography full time. I do weddings, corporate, commercial, and industrials. And of course, for these applications, you have to use the big professional lights. But these lights are a lifesaver because especially for corporate video, there's always something when you go to their office there, it's like white walls, nothing to look at. And sometimes you have to transform a nothing room into something that uh, the client wanted to uh, look like a little lab or high tech kind of thing. And this is when these lights come into play on a professional uh, applications because I used a bunch of these lights to hide behind the products that they have on the uh, display there and the video turned out to be very beautiful thanks to these little lights because even if you have a large light you're gonna have to aim at a distance but these lights can be placed behind an object with the minimum amount of brightness 10 percent 15 percent sometimes five percent due to its close proximity to a wall and everything which is gonna give you a lot of battery power and time of shooting with these lights as a matter of fact i'm using the r18 right on the background over here and look how easy it is to hide this light i'm moving all the way across the frame and you still can see the light which is right there so there are quite a few things to cover here, so let's cut to the chase and go straight to the point. This unit comes with a USB-C type cable, which I actually love because just like an iPhone, the lightning cable, you can actually charge the light either this way or that way, rather than having the standard USB mini cable, which can break very easy. And this is, I think, is a more robust, a more solid connection. I have a bunch of these lights here, but my biggest complaint as far as the USB charging cable that they send, most of them, they're no longer than three inches long, which makes it difficult to charge especially in the wall because I'm gonna have to have the light hanging somewhere now this cable here that they sent with the R18 measures 18 inches which is a pretty decent length so you can actually plug this in the wall and rest the light on the floor or something like that and on the bottom here is your USB-C port which can actually receive charge or provide charge you can plug this light in the wall and charge the battery or they also supply this cable here which you can actually connect your iPhone in my case I have an iPhone all you have to do is to plug this in here and the other side connects to your phone when you charge your phone or any other device using this as a power bank you don't even need to power the light on simply uh, plug the cable here and the other side into your phone or whatever device that you have and charging immediately begins here's one typical question that everybody would ask can I use this light at the same charge while it's plugged in a wall or if I'm using a power bank charging the light at the same time of course you can however keep in mind that it is never a good idea for you to use this light at hundred percent brightness while it's receiving charge so when you use this light being charged at the same time what's happening is current is starting to feed the battery with some charge and also the light is actually eating the battery at the same time so the light might overheat and you can probably damage this battery because it is a lot of stress on the battery so the manual recommends don't use this light at 100% when you're actually using the light being charged at the same time just try to keep it at a 35% 40% so if you need more power I would suggest you to wait a little bit fully charge and then you can use it again and this light also comes with this shoe mount here with the standard quarter inch threads in which we can actually mount in this light here this light has three options you have the uh, top the bottom and including the side so you have three sides to hook this up in here what I really like about what they did here is because all the other lights that I bought they also come with this uh, accessory here but the thing is you notice that they put a little bit of a rubber here because I would hate to scratch the uh, beautiful finish of this light metal with metal so not only on top here they also did the same thing on the bottom here which is the part that attaches to your shoe mount on your camera which also will not scratch your camera and of course there are many options to mount a slide you can use your own thing as well I like this thing because I can actually put it on a stand you can actually uh, tilt uh, up and down so whatever accessory that you have will fit on the standard quarter inch threads but if you're out of accessories you can still use this little thing that they have here and also comes with this awesome case I almost have a little carbon fiber kind of finish here it also comes with this and here's the inside of the case you simply slide your light over here and put all your cables down here so the only thing I would advise you before you put this accessory back in this little pouch here as you can see a shoe mount has a lot of sharp edges and also including the thread here so try not to put this facing front this way because you don't want this thread to come in contact with the light finish when you close the case so I would recommend it to kind of wrap this around a little something soft and actually put it upright like this I think the price is right and most of these little portable RGB lights they cost what they cost and if you are in a budget they also make the little photo F12 same thing aluminum casing detachable diffuser and very powerful lights 
Another thing that I really like about the R18 is how thin the aluminum casing is compared to other manufacturers. Uh, same exact thing, as you can see, they are identical, same number of RGBs and uh, CCT LEDs. Notice how thin the casing is compared to this thicker case here. And not to mention, this is a 3,300 milliamp battery and the R18 is 4,040 milliamp battery, which means gives you more power and shooting time. So a quick run on the outside of the light. Again, you have the uh, quarter 20 on top, side, and bottom. The back of the light here is very simple. You have your power button, the M button that accesses every feature, effects, and settings of this light. They also have an isolated button exclusively for brightness only, which doesn't make you confused when you're operating the lights. And this bottom here controls the intensity and a bunch of other things. So whatever you're doing with this light, the brightness is isolated, so that's brightness only, and this other button here is gonna control everything else along with the M button. This light also features a boost mode, which is a 100 second countdown. It only works on daylight only, locked to 5600 Kelvin. What that does is if you need more power output from this light, keep in mind that it provides more heat and also decreases the uh, battery life a lot faster. And this is why it's limited to a 100 second countdown. You're not supposed to be using this all the time. The manual is also stating because on a hot day, if you use this boost feature a lot, uh, repeatedly. You're gonna uh, see a little warning here it says hot, so allow the light to cool down before you start to uh, use this boost mode again. I never saw this message, it's just saying that you know on a very hot day or high temperatures this might uh, come on here as uh, hot, so just uh, put the light uh, to rest a little bit. So if you don't have any big panels or soft boxes or whatever, if that's all you got are lights like this, you can certainly uh, use this even as a main key light. As long as you put something in front of this light, I would recommend that semi-transparent uh, kind of disc. And then you put this light a little bit far away of the disc so to create a bigger light source. Of course, you're going to have to crank it up to 100% probably to have a decent amount of light because when you put something in front of the light, you're going to lose a lot of light output. The same thing, the soft box that's sliding my face here, uh, bare bulb is a lot stronger than the soft box because it blocks a little bit of light. So to my personal taste and primarily what I will see people using and what I recommend people to use this light for is for everything such as background lighting or accents, uh, hiding this light in the middle of the shot, and uh, hair light, fill light, and all kinds of things. So this light for fuel does a beautiful job. The light is at 15% at 3200 Kelvin because all my lighting is tungsten here. And as you can see, the way it's lighting my face, it's lighting pretty well. You don't need anything else. To what I see in my monitor there, there's no nasty shadows or anything like that. The light is set to 45 degrees, 40% intensity. I'm using a Canon C100 Mark II with a F4 lens, ISO 850 at 160th of a second, and this is the lighting output that I have with the light bare bone, no extra diffusers, nothing in front of the light. So now I'm gonna back up the light a little bit, place it to 100% and use this diffusion disc and see what happens to the lighting in a, as a key light. So here's an example that you can actually have a beautiful key light, but this, sorry about my giant disc here, my disc is like this huge, but is uh, the light is actually five feet away and I have to do an F2 on my camera ISO 850 at 160 of a second, and there you go. You have a beautiful key light only using the R18 acting as a key light. Just a quick reading here to show you. The light is at 100%, about five feet away from me. Light meter is at 1 30th of a second, ISO 800, and I have the light about five feet away from me at full 100% blast. I'm gonna do a quick reading here to show you how bright the light is. It's showing about F4, and the same thing at 100% brightness, five feet away, with this uh, diffuser in front of me, is reading about F2, eight and a half. Power the light on, press and hold the power button for two seconds, and the M button here is gonna access all the uh, features and functions of the light. Right now I'm on RGB, then you have your saturation mode, and then the CCT mode, which is the bicolor, uh, 3200 Kelvin to 5600 Kelvin. The brightness button is this button right here, which is exclusively reserved for brightness only, so it doesn't confuse you. This button controls everything else. For example, I'm on CCT mode. It goes from 3200 all the way to 5600 or 100 degree increments. This button also pushes in, but it has no purpose. It's just there, but it doesn't do anything. You just up and down. You can press and hold or one by one. When you press the M button again, you're gonna be accessing the other side of the panel, which are the effects. There's three rows containing three effects, each one. And this button here, the plus and minus, will do A, B, and C, and such. Press the M button again, you access the second effect, A, B, C, same exact thing, and finally the same thing here, A, B, C. And when you're continually pressing this button here, you access the whole thing again. 
Now to actually have the light turn on, you press the button again, uh, two seconds, and then press it one more time, that's when the light turns on. So right now I'm on RGB mode, and again, this is only for brightness, you can adjust from 100% in 1% increments, up or down, press and hold, it goes all the way down to 1%. Press the end button again, it's gonna take you to the saturation, and this light is also awesome for that because a lot of lights like this, the saturation level, as soon as you decrease to like 90%, the light is almost running white already. So you can actually notice how smooth the uh, saturation is. At 90%, you still have your red, but not so red, and then 80%, 70%, 80%, 70%, 80%, 70%. And then you finally have your white light. So I want to try some green. To go back to the RGB, you got to keep pressing the M button until it cycles through the whole thing, and then the arrow points again to the RGB. So let's test the saturation. Press the M button again. At 70%. You still have the green even at 50%. Or so now press the M button again. It's going to take you to the CCT mode, which is the uh, bicolor mode. And by the way, the brightness remains the same, even when you go back to the RGB, it's the same percentage that you left here. When you turn the light off, it's going to remember exactly where you left S. So when you come back, it's still at 62% and everything else remains the same. Press the M button again, it's going to take you to the effects on the other side of the screen. First option A is the lightning. And option B, lightning. And the option C is uh, TV screen. In my opinion, this is a little uh, pulsy to me. It's, uh, it's okay, but the uh, lightning storm is kind of cool. Now going back to the lightning storm here, now another super cool thing about this light, especially on the lightning effect, you notice that uh, you don't want this to be uh, repeating every three seconds on your uh, lightning uh, effect on your movie. So you can come here and press this button here once, you actually mute the thing somehow and then when it's time to resume the lightning, press the button one more time, and there you go, and then mute it again, and then you decide when the next lightning comes in. So there's no such thing as a mute button here, but what I did was access the, the uh, boost mode, which acts somehow as a mute on this light. So every time you resume the button, it's gonna go back to the, uh, whatever the light was, was doing. Now pressing the end button again, takes you to the next series of effects. This is the uh, slow uh, 360 RGB. And the next is a faster one. And the next one is a candle light. So I'm actually gonna be keying my light here so you can actually have the whole effect of the thing. So I think this effect here, it looks like those type of candles that they are about to run out pretty soon. And press the M button again. Next we have the police car. You cannot edit this effect the same way you cannot edit the effect with any other lights of this type. But however, you can adjust the brightness the Falcon Eyes light, RGB for example, doesn't let you adjust the brightness for some reason, but this one, it can go from 1% all the way to 100%. Next will be the uh, ambulance, and next will be the fire truck. Next, what we have here is the boost mode, which is locked down to a 5600 Kelvin color temperature to a 100 second non-editable timer. Pressing the M button is going to activate that. It's going to run down all the way to one, one second and then the light's going to turn off. So the boost mode is pretty cool. It lets you uh, boost even more light out of this light for a short period of time. But keep in mind that if you're shooting on a very uh, warm location, the uh, hot message might appear here. So the thing is try to avoid uh, to use this repeatedly. So give the light a break and resume operation later. I didn't see this message pop up yet, but I used this at least five, six times in a row. So that's pretty much all I got for the review of the Little Photo R18. These lights are awesome and I can't have enough of these lights. So useful, I can hide a bunch of them everywhere. Feel light, hair light, bunch of uses for it. And thank you for your time. See you next time.